Where's Larry? <laughs> Hello, Drew. You think I wasn't coming? I thought you'd be here. It's not easy for a guy like me to get a hundred bucks in a hurry, but I did it. You got no excuse for staying on here now, Claire. Stay where you are, McGowan. Get his gun, Rand. What is this, Marshal? Let's see the money. Rand, what's going on here? All right, McGowan, you took over $20,000 from the stage this morning. Where's the rest of it? What stage? What are you talking about? These bills are marked. I'm sorry, Drew. I'm only doing my job. You want to know where I got the money? Well, I'd be glad to tell you, Marshal. I borrowed it from your deputy less than half an hour ago. Oh, I'm sorry, honey. That won't wash. Rand's been here with me all morning. You see? All right, McGowan, let's go. Today was a good deal like any other summer day in Cimarron. I'm Matt Rockford. I'm mayor of this here city. And I remember it when it wasn't much more than just a bend in the trail. The town never looks better to me than when I'm getting ready to leave it, going to Kansas City for a few days on business. Excuse me, mister. You acquainted in this town? Well, now you might put it that way. Who's the law here? Art Sampson's our sheriff. Art Sampson. He a Texas man? No, Art's from Illinois. I suppose he's got some help. Yeah. Lane Temple's his deputy. Lane's a local boy. Any trouble? No, no. I just thought I might know your law, man. Thanks, mister. By the way, uh, if you plan on staying in town long, it might be a good idea to check your gun with the sheriff. I'll keep that in mind if I stay. Martin? <laughs> yes, sir, what's it gonna be? I'm hoping you can give me some information. My job is to sell drinks. All right, I'll have a glass of milk. Milk? <laughs> Are you trying to be funny, mister? You want me to buy something before you'll answer a question? All right, give me a glass of milk. We don't serve milk. If you're not ready for a man's drink, mister, you're in the wrong place. Most of my customers have been weaned. <laughs> <laughs> What's so funny about asking for a glass of milk? Now, hold on, mister. We don't want no trouble in here. Well, then don't ask for it. Howdy, stranger. I hear you're interested in meeting the law in this town. I just thought I might know the fellow wearing the badge. What's his name? Rand Scoville. Rand Scoville. Never heard of him. Sure you got the right town? Any law against looking around? No, no law, but I'll keep your gun while you're looking. You can pick it up at the sheriff's office when you get ready to leave. If you want my gun, you'll have to take it. If that's the way it's got to be. What happened to him? I, 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 I don't know. He just keeled over. Was he drunk when he came in? No, I never saw a more sober man in my life. All he asked for was a glass of milk. Yeah. A couple of you give me a hand. Yeah. All right, get him out of here. What are you, you going to do with him, Wayne? Take him over to the doctor's office. Have 
afternoon, Mr. Walton. How are things at the ranch? Not bad. Oh, what? Uh, what happened to that fellow they just carried out? Search me. He came in and ordered a glass of milk. <laughs> well, I says, this is no dairy. And he starts acting real mean. And all of a sudden, this fellow just keels over. He must be a pretty sick man. Yeah. Oh, uh, what's he doing in town? Just passing through? Well, he said he was looking for someone, some lawman or something. A man by the name of uh, Rand, Scully, Scoville, something like that, I don't know. Can I uh, buy you a drink, Mr. Walton? What? What on the house? No, thanks. The doc wasn't in his office. Is he here? No, he's gone out to the Nesbitt ranch. Mrs. Nesbitt's about to have her baby. What happened? Well, this man rode into town a few minutes ago, and I went over to the bar to talk to him. He just keeled over. But this ain't the lightest load I ever toted, Lane. Well, we better take him back to jail. Oh, Thanks. you'll do no such thing. Bring him on in here. Well, Beth, we don't know what he's got. But I don't think he's got the measles or the mumps. And anyway, I've had both. Bring him in. Come on, boys. In here, Lane. In here. I'll get some water and towels. We can try cold compresses. Good. Lane, you know how Mrs. Nesbitt is. Dr. Hodges is apt to be out there till midday tomorrow. Why don't you send someone for Dr. Bing? It's <laughs> a good idea, Beth. Take off his gun belt. Say, Hardesty, would you have time to ride over to Elk River and tell Doc Bing we need him? Oh, sure. I'll just put it on the chair, Fred. Right. Thanks. Still unconscious? Yes. I see you managed to get his gun belt. <laughs> and his wallet. His name is McGowan. At least he's good for the room rent. There's over $100 in here. I wasn't worrying about the room rent. Hey, Beth, maybe I'd better send a man over to keep an eye on him. Oh, now, Lane, that won't be necessary. I don't know. He was acting pretty mean before he passed out. I can take care of myself. Yeah, I guess you can. I'll give this to him when he comes to. All right. And I'll check in later. get some information I need. Well, sure. I'd be glad to try. Can we telegraph Austin, Texas? You bet we can. Well, how long would it take a message to get through? Well, you got your message written down? No, not yet. Well, I'll tell you. You write down what you want me to send, and chances are I'll be ready before you are.
Are you all right? Who took my gun? The deputy sheriff. Had no right to take it. Who are you? I'm Beth Purcell. This is my boarding house. Please, you must get back to bed. I gotta get my gun back. You can't go out. You're much too weak. Look what you're doing to yourself. You gotta find my gun. Please, try to get back to bed. Come, I'll help you. Get out of here. Find my gun. You're not going any place. You've got fever. Where's that debit? He had no right to meddle, no right. Now, Mr. McGowan, listen to me. Please lie back. Look, will you just find that deputy and get my gun back? What for? You're perfectly safe here. You don't understand. I understand that you must get some sleep. I can't. Not without a gun. Now will you go to sleep? Thanks. Mr. McGowan, I hope you won't mind my saying this, but you remind me of my husband. Not in the way you look, but the way you think. He was also a man who didn't feel safe unless he had a gun within reach. That was his gun. You said... was? My husband was killed the day we were married, reaching for that gun. I didn't expect you back so soon. You never do. What happened? They run out of whiskey at the saloon? I thought maybe you'd like to know he's caught up with us. What are you talking about? Who? McGowan. Are you drunk? They were carrying him to the doctor. He'd gone into the saloon to ask about me and collapsed. Is he sick? It's been almost six years. They must have released him from prison. That's right. Pour yourself some courage. We've got to get out of here. Run? You know why he's looking for us. We stay here, he'll find us. Look, we can't just, just toss a few things into a valise and take off. Why not? Well, what happens to all this? The ranch. Once we're clear, we'll have somebody sell it for us and send us the money. No, I won't do it. With what we get out of it, we can start over. We'll never get what I put into it. I've got six years of my life wrapped up in this place. <laughs> a lot more than that. I've been fighting for this since I was eight. When a skinny, straw-haired little snob spit on me and called me sharecropper trash. Look, I know all of that. And all those years that I was dancing in those saloons, being pawed at by drunks, well, I put up with it because I knew that someday, somehow, that I'd have all this. Well, I'm not going to throw it away and run. You don't have to tell me how you feel about this place. I know. I should. I've played second fiddle to it ever since we've been here. That isn't true. This has never been our ranch, our home. It's been yours. Little Claire's proof to herself in the world of the sharecropper's kids as good as the people used to spit on her. Maybe you're willing to die for this place, but I'm not. Look, Ran, the odds are with us, not McGowan. You say he's sick. Look, we've got to clear out of here and start over someplace else. No. I don't want to start over. Why should I? I've got everything I want right here. And I'm going to keep it, Rad, no matter what it costs me. Or you. Or Drew McGowan. Lane's coming, boys. Now remember, we take a firm stand. Ah, uh, don't worry, Mr. Wallen. Say, how'd you find out about this fellow being in prison? Bird at the telegraph office told me. He'd seen the wire that Lane got from Texas. You know, once he found out about this fellow, Lane ought to run him out of Tom Prado. 
You know as well as I do, Prude, if Art Sampson was here, that's exactly what would have happened. Trouble is, I left a boy to do a man's job. Well, good morning, gentlemen. What can I do for you? You can just do your job and we'll be happy. What does that mean? Well, you're acting sheriff while Art's out of town, aren't you? That's right. Then it's up to you to run that, that Texas jailbird out of Cimarron. Oh, so that's what it is. Yeah, we know all about him. Yeah, it's a thief, a robber. We got no room for such as that here. Now, wait a minute. He served his time. Maybe he just wants to make a fresh start. <laughs> that kind doesn't change. If he wanted to make a fresh start, he wouldn't have come into town wearing a gun. I took his gun. Easy enough to get another one. Ah, uh, send him on his way. Right now. He's a sick man. We're not asking you to rough him up, just see him out of town. It's your plain duty. If you're scared of him, Lane, some of us will be glad to lend you a hand. McGowan stays right where he is. All right, Lane. Just remember, we're speaking for the whole town. How long have you been having these pains? A couple of years. Mm -hmm. Ever talk to prison doctor about it? What for? The kind of food they gave us there. Ah, you ask me, I don't think food's got anything to do with it. Or every range rider would be sporting an ulcer. Hmm. No, I've known a lot of fellas like you. No, in a way, Adam. You know, the real sickness is here. That pain in your belly just one of the symptoms. So what's eating you, young fella? Not a thing, Doc. I'm just about as happy and content as a man can be. Well, that's the way you feel. Not very much I can do about it. What about the pains? Can't you give him something to relieve them? Well, I might try some of those pills. They won't cure it, but they'll take the edge off the hurt. Give them two now and one with every meal and whenever the pain starts kicking up. Plain, simple food and plenty of rest. Thank you for coming, Doctor. You know, young fellow, you're in a bad way. I don't know what it is eating away at your insides. But unless you do something about it, they're going to be measuring you for a coffin. Well, I'll send you a bill. Satisfying. Is it true what he said? Well, suppose it is. What good's it do to know it? It don't change nothing. It could if you wanted it to. Well, maybe I don't. Not even to save your life? <sighs> My life. All those years in prison, I stayed alive for one reason. Now you say forget it. What would that leave me? Well, there must be better reasons for living. Not for me. Look, why are you doing this? What's in it for you? Why don't you do us both a favor and just let me alone, huh? Wait. I'm sorry. I'm the one who should apologize. I had no right to meddle. I can't figure you. Get some rest. No, no, please, wait. I want to explain. You don't owe me any explanation. I want you to understand. I've never told anyone about this before. I guess I was too ashamed. When a cowpoke like me gets a night off in town, it's something a little extra special. Christmas, you know what I mean? One Saturday night, I 
I went into the Lead Dollar Saloon. She was there. This, this girl. The kind of guy like me pictures in his mind, but never really figures to see. I told her right off I was going to marry her. She kept me guessing, though. I, I never did know just how she did feel. And suddenly she... She said yes, she'd marry me. Trouble was she'd borrowed a hundred dollars against her wages. She said if she could pay that off, she'd quit and we'd get married. Well, I didn't have a hundred dollars anywhere near it. <laughs> I told her I'd raise it somehow. It was easier said than done, though. I'd just about given up on a... a friend of mine. A deputy marshal there in town said he'd be glad to lend me the money. <laughs> well, you can guess the rest of it. The money was marked. Part of $20,000 that had been taken from the stage that morning. Wasn't there anyone that believed you? Well, not when she swore that he'd been with her all that time. That's the way it was. I guess you can see what kind of a fool I was. Why? Because you trusted someone you cared for? That doesn't make you a fool. People make that mistake every day. Maybe. But they don't get sent to prison for it. What are you going to do if you find them? All right. You'll kill them. And then they won't send you to prison. They'll hang you for it. Once I settle my debt, it doesn't matter. Are they worth it, Mr. McGowan? They've already taken six years out of your life. Isn't that enough? You know, the way you talk, I'd almost think you knew them. We're trying to protect them. It would never occur to you, would it, Mr. McGowan? That you might be the one I'm trying to protect. Well? It didn't work. Why not? Lane refused to do anything. You let that... that boy with a badge on scare you? I didn't want him to start wondering why I'm so anxious to have McGowan run out of town. And I was counting on Pruitt and Hardesty to force his hand. Oh, you're always counting on somebody else to save your neck. But it all could be settled so easily. How? Don't wait for McGowan to come to you. Find him. Look, the law couldn't touch you. He's threatened your life, so you, you shoot him in self-defense. I couldn't do that. You're afraid of him? No, it's more than that. Sick as he is, he's more of a man than you are. Look, it's easier to face a gun when you know you're right. Right? <laughs> Who do you think you're fooling? Look, Claire, once I was a pretty good lawman. And what did you have? A dollar a day, a tin badge. And a clear conscience, but I traded it for $20,000. What have I got now? Not even a dollar a day, because every dollar you get your hands on goes for more land. And it'll pay off someday big. Sure, but who'll be around to enjoy it? The kids we don't have? When you get right down to it, Claire, what do I have? A loving wife? You say face, McGowan. Shoot it out. Well, suppose I did. What's in it for me? Nothing. I can't win. But on the other hand, what's in it for Claire? When I saw McGowan yesterday, I wondered if you'd sent for him. It'd be one way to get rid of me. Yes. Yes, it would. If I wanted to get rid of you. But you don't. No, and to prove it, I'm going to see that McGowan leaves town. Today. And how do you think you'll manage that? Oh, I'll find a way. Mr. Pruitt, they told me I might be able to find you here, but now that I have, I don't really know how to begin. 
Well, if there's something troubling you, ma'am, you go right ahead and tell me. Well, it may seem foolish to someone like you. The other ladies and myself in town are really afraid. Afraid? Afraid of what? That gunfighter who's staying at Beth Purcell's. Oh, him. Oh, I knew that someone like that wouldn't frighten a man like you. But women are so defenseless. Sure, sure, I can understand. In fact, we took this up with a, with a deputy. Oh, I know, but you know Beth Purcell has that lane wrapped around her little finger. She seems to be the only woman in town who wants that jailbird to stay. If the sheriff was only here. But he's not, and before he gets back, I'll tell what terrible thing might happen. Well, things being the way they are, ma'am, I don't exactly see what I can do. Oh, it isn't your responsibility. I, I can't blame you for being afraid. Well, hold on now. I ain't afraid. That's what my husband and all the others said, but they didn't do anything. Well, that's just where I'm different. I said from the first this fellow ought to be run out of town. And by golly, you made me see I was right. How can we ever thank you, Mr. Pruitt? My pleasure, ma'am. doing out of bed? I can't stay in bed all my life. You're too weak to be up. I feel all right. Oh, yes. You're in wonderful shape. Anyone can see that. Now, stop acting like a child. Back to bed. I'm not used to such comfort. Oh? What did you do before? Punch cattle, road fence. Nearly all my life on the range. That was the worst part of it, being cooped up inside. Never seeing anything but a dirty gray wall. Yeah, if things had gone a little differently, uh, I might have had my own spread by now. You still could. If you'd start concentrating on important things and stop nursing that old grudge. Why, you aren't even sure the people you're looking for are in Cimarron City. They were seen here. How long ago? I don't know exactly when it was. Maybe a year ago. Maybe longer. Why, they could be thousands of miles away. Someone seems to be in a hurry. Excuse me. Just a minute. Oh, hello, Mr. Pruitt. Where is he? Who? A gowan. Oh, he's much too sick to see anyone. Well, sick or not, he's going to get out of this town. He's not going any place, and neither are you. Where is he, Hot See you right in there. Drew! What? Drew! Drew! to see you get hurt. Now, this ain't helping nobody. Get out. Now, now look at this Al who has got to go. You lay a hand on him again and I'll shoot you. I didn't bargain for no gunplay. Oh, you ain't gonna stop this town from running him off. Maybe not, but I'm going to stop you. You all right, Beth? Yes, get these two out of here. Get it. Are you all right? Will I get a doc? No. Can you walk? Yeah, I guess so. Lane, see that they don't come back, please.
You knew those men? Of course. Pruitt and Hardesty. Not the smartest men I ever met, but I always thought of them as being harmless. Certainly not the kind that would try anything as vicious as this. Unless... Unless... somebody else put him up to it? Just a minute, Mr. Hardesty. I see you. Oh, oh. Morning, Beth. A lovely morning, ain't it? You ought to be ashamed of yourselves. Do you realize that I could bring charges against you? Oh, but you wouldn't do that. Well, I, I meant no harm. It, it was all Pruitt's fault. He was so steamed up, I thought he knew what he was talking about. Why, if I'd known how you felt about that... Never fellow, mind never... how I feel about him, Mr. Hardesty. Oh. Uh, say, how, how is he? I sure hope that beating we, uh, Pruitt gave him didn't set him going back too far. I mean, is he... Is he getting along all right now? Oh, he's getting stronger by the minute. He was up and around all morning. Oh, you don't say. As a matter of fact, he asked me where he might find the two gentlemen who called on him when he was so sick. I think he wants to show his appreciation. Uh, uh, Beth, Beth, you'll explain to him about me and how I, I didn't... Oh, I'm just a darn sheep, always following somebody like Pruitt around and getting beat up for what he does. It, but it, you can make him understand, can't you, Beth? With, if... Well, I'll try, but I'm not sure that I can. Oh, well... Honestly. I'm in a real hurry. I want to talk to you. Now, looky here. I'm in enough trouble already from listening to you and Pruitt. How's that? I just ran across Beth. She says McGowan's breathing fire. Are you and Pruitt scared of a man who's too weak to stand by himself? No more he ain't. Beth says he's up and looking for them has pushed him around when he was sick. And that's why I'm going to go as far as I got to get... Look, I've got to go. Come on, Nell. Come on. Come on. Well, what'd you find out? I talked to Hardesty. He says McGowan's up and around. Well, he couldn't have been very sick. We've wasted two days and given him a chance to get his strength back. Get your coat on, we're going to the bank. Bank? That's right, we're going to get a loan on this place. <laughs> oh, no. I'm clearing out, and I'll need some money. I figure we can borrow 10,000, my share. If you want to stay, you can. Pay off the loan, and this place will be all yours. You're not going to do this, Fred. Get your coat on. I won't go. <laughs> and you can't borrow a penny on this place without my signature. All I want is my share. Your share? Well, you are not entitled to a cent. Not one cent. You'd have gone through that money in a year. I'm the one who invested it, and I won't let you borrow on this land. Now, if you want to run, run, but I'm not going to pay your way. I'm through. Get yourself another woman to support you. You greedy little tramp. Oh, let go of me. Let go of me. You listen to me. I'm going into town arranged for a loan, and I'm bringing the papers out here for you to sign. I'll never do it. Oh, don't. Don't. You'll sign. <laughs> Believe me, you'll sign. Alvin. I hope McGowan sees you. I hope he sees you and Tony blows your head off.
Looks like you've been on a shopping spree. You're leaving. I figured to be gone before you came home. That would have been the easier way out. And you are in the habit of taking the easy way, aren't you? Mrs. Purcell, Beth, when I came into town, everything that I had to do was clear and simple. You mean until I started meddling? No. No, I appreciate what you've done, tried to do. So much so that you were going to leave town without saying a word. Don't you understand? I don't want to get you mixed up in this. You cause me so much more grief if you go out there looking for them. I think you mean it. Of course I do. I'm sorry. It can't be helped. That's right, hurry. Go and find him before you stop and think. Because the more you think, the more you'll realize that killing is not the answer. It's the only answer. Listen to me, all those years I was in prison, I had to have something. Some reason to get up in the morning, drag myself through another day. The men who didn't have anything to fasten to on the outside went under Beth. Some quietly, some screaming. But I didn't because I had something to think about, plan toward. All right, Drew. Maybe in prison you needed this kind of hate. But not now. Drew, the whole world is before you. It's too late. No, it's not too late. Until you face the man that betrayed you and pull the trigger of that gun, it's not too late. Drew, I have some land west of town. It's a small spread, but good land with good water and good grass. I've never done anything with it. I've been waiting for the right person to come so I could move him on the land. Help me stock cattle, work shares. Not me. Well, I realize that you're tired now, but I thought perhaps you could move out there and rest and think it over. There's a lean-to you could live in, and I just picked up some supplies. Beth, why would you do this for me? <laughs> I'm an excellent businesswoman. Ask anyone in Cimarron City. Why didn't I meet you six years ago? Why? Your life didn't stop six years ago, Drew. You can have what you wanted then. Oh, Drew, won't you please ride out with me and look at the land? It's just beautiful. Why, you can see a hundred miles in any direction. It wouldn't work. How do you know if you don't try? Goodbye, Beth. All right, Drew, if that's the way you want it. Your horse is in the shed up the street. Thanks for everything. Goodbye, Drew. You wouldn't shoot me, would you, Drew? Where's Rand? Well, he's not with me. Oh, Drew, from the minute I heard you were in town, I, I've wanted to see you. You don't know what I've been through. About $20,000, if I remember right. Oh, I know. I was a fool. You'll never know how much I missed you. How much I wanted to do something, anything to help you. You might have gone to the law, told him the truth. I wanted to, but I was afraid that, that Rand would shoot me. I asked you where he was. You didn't answer me. You don't have to worry about him. He's been in a cold sweat ever since he heard you were looking for him. 
Right now, he's trying to arrange for us both to sneak out of town. Before you catch up with him, and I won't let that happen. You want me to find him? Yes. Drew, this time he can't go unpunished. He's ruined your life and mine. And I want him to pay for it. You hate him that much? I couldn't begin to tell you what it's been like living with him. His steady abuse. Knowing all the time that I helped him betray the man who really loved me. You did love me, didn't you, Drew? Look, settle with him. For both of us. Where can I find him? He'll be home soon to get me. Now you can be there, waiting. Well, what's the matter? You came here looking for him, didn't you? That's right. Well, what is it? Nothing, let's go. What do you want? I've been talking to your friend Hardesty. Well, maybe he's got time to waste. I ain't. He had enough time to break into a boarding house and beat up a sick man. Well, what are you talking about? Hardesty said someone asked you to run McGowan out. I want to know who. Oh. What's it matter now? It could matter a lot. Ran! He's not back yet. Come in. You thought I was his decoy, leading you into a trap. As I remember, that's the way you worked it before. I've had six years to regret it. Well, have I changed so much, Drew? Hardly at all. Neither of you. Oh, a few lines make you look more like a man. You were still a boy then. Not that a handsome face means much. I've learned that. It's the strength inside that matters. How could I have been so blind, Drew? I guess you've paid for it. Oh, I have. All these years, I've, I've thought how different it could be for you and me. Well, maybe one day you'll, you'll be able to forgive me. Hmm? Hmm? Are you sure he'll be coming back here? He'll be back. McGowan. Well, he's gone, lately left about a half an hour ago. Well, you shouldn't let him out. Where did he go? Well, I don't know. Why? What is this all about? I think I know who he was looking for. I thought he'd be back by now. You know, if I was Rand and wanted to be sure to get out of town safely, I might have had you pull some stunt such as this. But he didn't. You can trust me, Drew. ready for your signature. Why don't you make it easier for both of us? 
Gran, you have a visitor. Drew. You're smaller than I remembered. What are you waiting for? You brought me here 24 hours too late, Claire. Brought you here? What's the matter with you? It's too late to back down. Beth was right. Till the minute you pull a trigger, it's not too late. I wanted you to kill him. I know. They'll still think you did. I suppose they will. And to be sure there's no slip up, I'm going to shoot you too. In self defense. Get the guns. Gowans and the clear. He wouldn't even draw on me. My wife brought him here, hoping he'd kill me. When he didn't, she tried. Then... Why did you come here if you weren't going to shoot him? To pay back a debt. Six years ago, he lent me a hundred dollars to help Claire. Here it is. Give her a nice funeral. How many times have I said thanks since we met? I haven't kept count, Drew. Well, you should have, because right now it's the only payment I can make and all I owe you. Are you sure you wouldn't like to reconsider my offer about the land? I'm not ready for that, Beth. The first thing I want to do is get away. Get well, learn to think for myself again. Does that make sense to you? Maybe when I come back, if the land's still open, we can talk about it. All right? The land will be open if you come back, Drew. I'll come back. You should know by now that McGowan never forgets a debt. <laughs> 